Alrighty then, it's time once again to open up the deep fat fried vault. This time we're going to unleash an episode. Oh, this one's a scary one. The Zodiac Killer. <laughs> but it's old. It's old. It's ancient history. Oh, but you could be seeing new stuff right now. If only you were a Pessimist Productions patron. It's real easy. Just click that link down there, and instead of watching our old garbage, you could watch our brand new gems. And plenty of our old garbage as well. So join up. You know you wanna. Every week I show up here, I make my plea, I ask, I beg. Just, just do it. You know what I mean? This is the Zodiac speaking. If you don't watch DFF, I am going to fucking kill you. I'm going on a nice little murder spree, and you're all coming along for the ride here on Deep Fat Deep Fat Fried. What a lie. What a lie. disgusting deception. What a fucking lie. What a magical, sexual, beautiful moment in history this Dude, is. Dude, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Sin, Senor Tomato, I'm fucking fully erect right You're now. You're not going to stop him with your hand, Paul. It's already done, TJ. It's already done. I've made a creative decision. I'm going to give the people a good show like I always do. I'm just going to do it with my hand right here. <laughs> This right dude, I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up the perfect chain of pictures of me looking like I want to end myself. It's hey, Paul, over. What, what's over there, dude? Can you point point over there for a second? Just no, no, no. Other hand. Oh, I can't do that. I need Why this not? hand. For I got what? a bloody nose, and if I let it go, blood's gonna go all over my favorite shirt, well, and I can't cool. do that. That'd be cool though, dude. It's my Hitchcock shirt. People want to be entertained, Paul. A little blood, sweat, and tears. Well, literally. This is my Hitchcock shirt, though. I can't bleed on it. The people would gladly buy another Hitchcock for, shirt for you, Paul. They would gladly do it. I mean, there's just going to be a picture. <laughs> I know. There's just going to be a picture of you like this. I mean, you know. Except Whatever. Maybe. I'm just trying to get the little victories here. Combo know? breaker. Yeah, you're not going to win. You're not going to win, Paul. <laughs> get you a lucha mask if you want. <laughs> no, thanks. All right. Well, you know, I just uh, thought I'd offer. Thanks for the offer. Hockey though. mask, perhaps? No. No, no, no. I'd like a big, you know, one of those big expensive latex masks of some monster. I want to wear one of those on the show one day just to fuck this dude up. Latex monster mask? Yeah, like a good one, though. Not like a shitty Halloween one, but one of the upscale ones, you know. Upscale for the refined monster you know, dresser. It's still at the it. Halloween Halloween Superstore, but it's up on the wall, and yeah. it's got a big yellow uh, price tag, like 350 real, on real it or some shit. Real expensive yeah. mask. Yeah. Real nice, and I'm just going to wear that. You could get yourself like a Daft Punk helmet, dude. An Ooh, LED, that'd be cool. An LED helmet. Or a Dead Mouse helmet. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Dead Mouse 5. Dead Mouse 5, dude. Yeah. Dead Mouse 5! Oh, man. Me and Paul earlier. There's this fucking stupid ass YouTube channel where they uh, explain music to you. It's like X and X band explained or whatever the fuck. Sounds and lame as shit. It's horrible. And the th this is an indication here. So, um,. We were watching one about uh, Ween, and uh, this guy was talking about other bands that were like around the same era or whatever the fuck, and he uh, he mentioned Guar. What? But he called them G War. <laughs> He's like, there are similar bands yeah. doing strange stage acts such as blah 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 and G War mm -hmm. and blah blah blah. You know, and we were just like. Yeah, this motherfucker, he's, he's going to explain yeah. music Dude, to me. Dude, to this fucking day, me and TJ have a fucking a standing debate that he went to a Guar concert, which I know he did not go. I went, dude. Dude, I even looked up the time you said you went. They ne did not play a show in New Orleans. Oh, shit. That. Yes, they did, dude. You know what? You were such a fucking liar, TJ. Your ass did not drive from fucking Baton Rouge to New Orleans, dude. I'm sorry. It did not happen. Yes, I did. Fuck you know, the Zodiac, dude. DFF, TJ's Guar concert. TJ's Guar concert. <laughs> 
the masterpiece. You didn't go. <clears throat> G War though. G War. I did, actually didn't see Guar. I saw G War. Oh, you saw G. I, well, I believe that. G War. G War was awesome, dude. One G of the War best was a bands. great band. Not quite as good as Guar, but still pretty fucking good. But yeah, we watched his whole video, and suffice it to say, that wasn't the only mistake he made, and he had a, a very. You know, I know we're Wikipedia the show over here, but he had a very yeah. I read a Wikipedia article and covered the major points in this video and called it how to really understand Ween. And then the first thing he says in his recap is like Ween was a very successful band. They inspired a popular T V show. Talk about SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, which is just like whatever. Like, yeah, I mean, that's their crowning. It's achievement. an interesting blurb, but he made it like a centerpiece, wow. like it was like the top of their career, and I'm just like, fuck you. That's the most important thing that a band can accomplish. He I takes mean, the most uh, important thing about Ween, which is Bugnish, the demon god that they worship, and make their music to appease. And he just covers it right at the end. Yeah, and they've got this weird demon god named Bugnish. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for understanding <laughs> Ween with me. It's like, fuck you, soulless piece of shit. Did, did Ween create SpongeBob, dude? <laughs> the Ween, um, Ween's album, The Mollusk, inspired the guy that created SpongeBob to oh. create SpongeBob. Well, that's pretty cool, actually. Yep. It's an interesting blur, yeah. but it's not their it crowning should, achievement. It sh- yeah, th- it was something they inspired, not something they did. They inspired SpongeBob. That's why they exist. That's the only reason. Did you tell you me need. SpongeBob inspired you to create the uh, Amazing Atheist channel? Yeah. So, in so a did, way, so Ween, Ween created-, created you. We created SpongeBob. SpongeBob created me. Thus, Whoa. the cycle of creativity continues on and on. So today's topic is the Zodiac Killer. Last time we did uh, Jack the Ripper. Um, this one right here, though, um, this is a similar to Jack the Ripper in that never caught. Yep, never saw. I think that's probably why we chose to cover them back to back like this. Right, it is. There are similarities between these guys. A lot of differences, though. Yeah. Uh, for one thing, uh, the Zodiac definitely wrote letters to the police, and we know them to and be to the legitimate. newspapers, and they're known to be legitimate letters well, they, because he knows believe, details of crimes. They believe that it, it was inspired by Jack the Ripper. That, that that was probably listed as inspiration of his why he did. Uh, and like you said, like the last episode, we covered that the letters' authenticity to, for Jack the Ripper are just extremely called into question. Uh, They're probably not you real. Know, I'm no psychological expert, but I think I feel like the Zodiac Killer has a very different pathology than Jack the Ripper did. Uh, you I know, would say so. Like with Jack the Ripper, I mean, there was uh, he targeted women primarily, and uh, he was all about cutting them open, seeing what was inside taking organs um you know just the brutality of his murders was just crazy um just a total butcher well the, but the media attention around total was, animal was very similar as, as I'm, oh as yeah I'm the media attention asked and the zodiac me. clearly wanted the attention the zodiac courted the attention like jack the ripper never did true um jack the ripper probably didn't want media attention maybe he did uh, but, you know, he didn't court it like the Zodiac did. The Zodiac actively wrote letters to the police and to the newspapers and taunted Place them. Placed phone calls. Yeah. Um, allegedly came on TV shows. I mean, he did. I mean, a lot of shit has been attributed to him. But, I mean, undeniably inspired by Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Because even though those letters weren't legitimate, there, you know, there are people that believe that they are. And maybe there is a chance that one of them is. We don't know. So I mean, there's literally hundreds of uh, letters <laughs> from the uh, Jack the Ripper or from whatever name you want to use well, for the White it, Chapel. It's, cultur- it's cultural impact and the profoundness of everything definitely was an inspiration. And uh, this definitely got people fucking upset uh, in the area. I mean, like, you know, London was was terrified of Jack the Ripper. San Francisco was terrified of um, the Zodiac Killer. Um, <laughs> he was... Uh, Active from the uh, late 60s to the early 70s. Um, so not a very long... No, not a long... I mean, much longer once longer again than, than Jack, Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Uh, assuming that we only can consider the, can- the canonical victims. And much like, um, much like Jack the Ripper as well, the Zodiac has all sorts of little uh, of, you know, victims that might be him, but maybe not. Yeah, suspected potential victims, but they're not certain... Uh, he was uh, he operated in uh, your your backyard, uh, Paul, North, yeah. Northern California. Uh, yep. 
Uh, his identity, like I said, remains unknown, although there's lots of speculation about who did it. Uh, he uh, murdered people in Benicia, Valero, Vallejo. Is that Vallejo. 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 Uh, Lake Berryessa. Mm-hmm. And uh, San Francisco between December 1968 and October 1969 uh, might have gone on a little longer so, than that, so depending on the, who the, you consider canonical victims. The the M.O., uh, like you talked about earlier, the Zodiac liked to kill young couples. Yeah, that was his main thing is he, he liked killing couples. At like lookout point kind of, you know, romantic areas, secluded areas. Uh, victims range between the ages of uh, 16 and 29. So really wasn't targeting old people. But I mean, that's really the age range that you're going to be making out in a car on the lookout point. Yeah. You know? Right. So uh, that might have been a limiting factor. In, in this, this killer too. is one of the few serial killers to get to name himself, assuming that Jack the Ripper uh, letter is not authentic. The Zodiac actually self-identified as the Zodiac, had his own little symbol and everything. He, he really was a, a big into crafting his own mythology. Yeah. Me, he was media driven. Yeah, very much so. Um, and he knew that if he didn't do it, they were going to do it for him, right? You know, they were going to label him what they wanted. He, was, he clearly uh, wanted to be known as what he was. He was kind of the first was. serial killer had some had his own little PR going. Yeah. And kind of the prototype for a lot of uh, movie serial killers, which is like, you know, he's taunting the police. He's oh, like, yeah. catch me, catch me. If you've ever seen one of these shitty ass detective thriller dramas where there's a ser- I mean I covered some in that Hellraiser review that I did yeah, yeah. where there's some de- a detective and there's an evil killer out there and he's writing notes to the police and he's playing a cat and mouse game and it's uh, it's high you know if you've ever seen a shit movie like that it was definitely ripping off the Zodiac killer oh yeah I mean he pioneered that I mean he was the if you're talking about someone who's taunting the police who's taunting the media who's taunting the whole city and I mean, sending evidence to the police. Yeah, I mean, like, to the point where, I mean, like, he's just daring them to catch him, and they couldn't do it. Now, today, I think things would have probably gone a little bit differently with the forensics uh, that we have now. Oh, and, but and in fact, in one of his letters, he claimed to actually talk to the police intentionally. Doesn't surprise me. I mean, he was a liar, though, so. I mean, yeah. All of this you must take with a grain of salt. We don't know what he really did. We don't know how many. I mean, he could have killed way more people. It's yet, yet again. These are the ones, uh, the ones we're about to talk about, that have actually been definitively attributed to the Zodiac. Okay. So the first uh, time the Zodiac turns up is in uh, on December twentieth, nineteen sixty-eight. You have a uh, seventeen-year-old David Faraday and his sixteen-year-old girlfriend Betty Lou Jensen, both of whom were shot to death. Uh, near their car at a remote spot on Lake Herman Road on the outskirts of Vallejo, California. Uh, Police were baffled, unable to determine the motive for the crime or the suspect. Dude, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I just thought of a weird connection. Yeah? Ween has a song called Vallejo. Oh, shit, dude. Weird. It's all cyclical. It's all cyclical. Zodiac inspired them, dude. They were actually on their very first date, so I would say that's a failure for a first date. Let's go get killed by the Zodiac. Uh, They just attended a, uh, they were actually planning to attend a Christmas concert, I guess, at their high school. Uh, They decided to visit a friend before stopping at a local restaurant. And at about 10, 15 p.m., uh, Faraday parked his mother's Rambler in a gravel turnout which was well known as Lover's Lane. <laughs> so we know what they were doing. So, you know, they basically, they were like, yeah, let's go to this concert, but first... But first we got to fuck, yeah. Let's see what it's like with my dick in your vagina. Um, shortly after 11 p.m., their bodies were found by Stella Borges, who lived nearby. The Salano County Sheriff's Department investigated the crime, but no leads developed. It's pretty hard to solve a crime where there's no motive because, you know, most murders are done for something like a practical reason. What came first, the chicken or the egg? The movie trope of lovers kissing, you know, and and the killer comes to get them or the Zodiac doing it? Uh, Who knows? I don't know. You'd have to see, like, Uh, if there's any, like, make-out point murder scenes in movies prior to 1968. Just a thought that I had. I suspect that there probably were, but who knows? You never know. Maybe he's the genesis of that trope. So I'm wondering if he was inspired by that or if they're inspired by him, you know? Because if there were a bunch of... If that was already a trope when he started doing this that was well-established, then very likely 
he took inspiration from those films. Well, I mean, it's, it's a good idea anyways if you want to kill people. I mean, yeah, you're, you're talking in a place where they're gonna, he, he just lies in wait. He, the, he knows young kids are going to show up. I mean, and then he, just, he can do whatever he wants. So what they think happened is they think he pulled up on their car. Uh, he probably had a flashlight yeah, on him. He uh, might have imitated a law officer. Yeah. Um, he told them, get out of the car. They complied probably blinded by the flashlight, probably thinking they were talking to a cop. Um, and once they were out, he just, you know, shot them both. Where did uh, he shoot them? I believe he shot them in the he head. He shot Faraday, the uh, the dude, in the, uh, in the fucking head. He shot um, the, uh, the girl. She was uh, gunned down in the back as uh, she tried to run after her boyfriend was, was shot in the face, you know, basically. The, okay. the trust that they kind of blindly show is kind of reminiscent of, um, you know, I've seen the girl with the dragon tattoo where he invites him in, but he kind of knows he's the killer. But yeah. He's, but it's like, he's like, and he even comments like, you know, because of show, social politeness, you came in here, even though you knew pretty much I was going to, you uh, knew what I was going to do to yeah, you. Yeah. What I was going to do to you because you felt obligated. And so it's kind of the same thing. Like flashlight. Oh, it's the cops. We better get out. You better comply. And he just takes advantage of that social trust. Like I'm supposed to comply with this person, otherwise I'm gonna get some serious shit. And it just lets him line up the perfect yeah. headshot on the more dangerous of the two victims, which is the dude. I mean, if anybody's gonna stop this, it's probably gonna be the dude attacking him and wrestling the guy. You know, so he uses that to headshot the dude and then shoots the girl as she runs away. So it's, Th- a, meth- it's so a methodical killing. I don't know a whole lot about Zodiac. I haven't done a lot of reading, so I'm kind of learning with the audience tonight. Well, did, did, what does he do with the bot? Does he just leave the bodies? He, he the just bodies. leaves them there. Yeah. He does he there. do anything to them? Any no. S- no. No he, symbolism on the bodies or anything. No, he just kills them and leaves. I okay. mean, there's some messages he left, but it wasn't through the bodies. Yeah, okay. Uh, he did, I think, on one scene, leave uh, his calling card to let them know. Well, but, you'll be able to show that image too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the second attack was not. Shortly after, it was about, uh, it was July 4th, actually, 1969. Um, so, uh, basically, seven months later, um, it was Darlene Farron and Michael Mago? Magu? I don't know. Maga? Maga. <laughs> Maga. It's Trump. Head of his time. He's based. Uh, drove into the Blue Rock Springs Park in Vallejo, four miles from the Lake Herman Road murder site, and parked. While the couple sat in Farron's car, a second car drove into the lot and parked alongside them, but almost immediately drove away. Returning about 10 minutes later, this second car parked behind them. The driver of the second car then exited the vehicle, approached the passenger side door of Farron's car, carrying a flashlight and a 9mm Luger. The killer directed the flashlight in Magoe's and Farron's eyes before shooting at them, firing five times. Both victims were hit. And several bullets passed through Mago and Ed Farron, so they got shot through. They got plugged it's, through. It's almost like he realized that in the dark, you see a light source, and you're instantly going to go and turn and look at that and say, what is that? And then he kills them. Well, I think it's really, I think you guys are dead on about the cop impersonation thing. That's just the feeling I get, because you're right. Like, if I was out making out with my girlfriend, and all of a sudden somebody walked up with a flashlight, I'm not going to think... This is a serial killer. I'm going to think, oh, fuck, man, I'm in trouble. My dad's going to kill me or, you know, oh, fuck, man, I uh, wouldn't do anything. And now I'm going to go to jail or get a ticket or whatever the fuck, you well, know. Also, it's very telling, too, that he pulls up 10 minutes in the, and like he wants to see who's in it. It's, it's not just like a random thing of like he it, drives it, off probably to psych himself up yeah, or maybe to get some materials. Well, probably also to think, you know, is it if it's some old dude, he's probably not interested. He, he wants a, he has a very specific group of people he wants to kill. I mean, it, that too, the the fact that he comes, sees who's there, pulls away. I think that's just a safety thing so that if they're wary that he's there, they're no longer wary. And then he can actually get an ambush on them. Yeah. So uh, both of them were hit multiple times. Uh, he He walks away. The uh, the dude starts moaning, so he realizes, oh, that dude's still alive. So he goes back, uh, shoots each of them twice more for good measure, and then uh, drives away. Uh, the next day, or uh, really just you know shortly after midnight that same night, really, uh, he he calls the police department to report his own crime. Already starting to develop this. 
he's, needs for recognition for what he's done. And kind of an infatuation with being recognized for his credit. Like, he doesn't want to take full credit and say, this is who I did this, this is who I am. It's he wants to play this cat and mouse game with him. He wants them to know he did it, but have to try to find him. Not only does he tell them, hey, I just murdered these two kids uh, over here, but he also claims responsibility for the previous murder. He's like, hey, and I also killed them other kids. A yeah. few, you know, a few months back. Right. Uh, the police trace the call to a phone booth at a gas station. And uh, is about three tenths of a mile from Farron's home and only a few blocks from the Vallejo Police Department. Uh, wow. Farron was pronounced dead at the hospital. Mago survived the attack despite being shot in the face, neck and chest. I don't know whether to describe that as lucky or not. Uh, he described his attacker as being between 26 and 30 years old. 195 to 200 pounds, uh, about 5'8", white male with short, light brown curly hair. Is there a transcript of the call he made? Uh, I can look for one. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I would just wondering. I don't think there's, I don't see one here. I, I, I'm just wondering I'm sure what is. kind of little, you know, language games he played with the police and how he presented himself as a character for the first time. So at this point, he killed three people and attempted to kill four people or you know he attempted to kill one more aside from those three it's a pretty much a fucking miracle that the you know the michael um mago or whatever the hell his name was didn't yeah i mean die. that's just miraculous so it was a, it was shortly thereafter that the letters began and uh it was uh i'm just we're just gonna take a look at some of his fucking letters here uh, I don't have them in their specific order, but I just think it's kind of interesting to just take a look at the kind of letters he was sending the police and the media around this time. Um, so here's a little sample of that kind of shit. Let me just reduce this in size a little bit. Sure. This is the Zodiac speaking. I have become very upset with the people of San Fran Bay Area. They have not complied with my wishes for them to wear some nice Zodiac buttons. He has his little symbol. It's just an O with a, with a cross through it. Um, he, told, he, he basically told the people of San Francisco if they didn't start wearing his symbol on them that he would uh, attack a school bus. Um, I promised to punish them if they did not comply by... Uh, annihilating a, school, a full school bus, but now school is out for the summer, so I punish them in another way. I shot a man sitting in a parked car with a 38. Zodiac 12, San Francisco Police Department 0. Keeping score. The map coupled with this code will tell you where the bomb is set. You have until fall to dig it up. And uh, he gives them this, this crypt... You know, he likes to send them uh, cryptographs, ciphers... Um, only one of which has ever been solved. Um, well, they, they've, others have claimed to solve them, but nothing definitively. There's only one that's been definitively. There, there's an there. Solved. There's a creative mind behind this. This is um, not somebody that's loony to the point of being out of control of themselves. You know, th this is a way more practiced and thoughtful pre presentation than you would expect from somebody that's just a raving psychopathic loon. You know what I mean? Well, I, I think in a way it's also I'm also like he was getting into a character. Like, Yeah. Because obviously he told so many tall tales. Like, I'm going to attack a school bus. What's that going to do? There is no bomb. This yeah. bomb yeah, he's the, referencing the, bomb doesn't did, fucking exist. It doesn't exist. The school bus thing never materialized. But it, what it did was it made, it scared the shit out of people in San Francisco because they're thinking, okay, some guy's going to attack a school bus filled with arcades. I mean, after his school bus threats... Um, every school bus in San Francisco and the surrounding area was being followed by police cars. By the way, I don't want to misquote the Zodiac here. He didn't say he was going to annihilate a school bus. He was going to annihilate it. Yeah, he wasn't the best speller. No, 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 no. I don't think that... Dude, a, a dude this... Think about it. A dude this careful doesn't misspell a word for no reason. Dude, he was not threatening to blow that bus up. He was going to annihilate that bus and everybody on it. Damn, dude. What a disgusting freak. He's even more depraved now, than No, I, I bet there was something to do with that misspelling and the cipher down there as well. Maybe. Because this is way too much. This mind is too careful. He misspelled a lot of words, and his handwriting is not exactly the neatest. And he, he misspells bus, too. He spells bus with uh, two S's. So. I, see, that sounds out like a red flag to me, dude. 
That's a cipher. Dear editor, clue. this is the murderer of the two teenagers last Christmas at Lake Herman. This might be his first letter. And the girl on the 4th of July near the golf course in Vallejo. To prove I killed them, I shall state some facts which only I and the police know. Christmas, one, brand name of ammo, Super X. Two, ten shots were fired. Three, the boy was on his back with his feet to the car. Four, the girl was on her right side, feet to the west. Uh, fourth, Sally? What? I can't read it. One, girl was wearing perfume. Fourth July. Fourth July. Fourth July. Okay, one, girl was wearing uh, something slacks. Two, the boy was also shot in the knee. Three, uh, brand, does that say brand name of the ammo was? Western. Western something. Yeah. Uh, so this is, uh, this was his basically credibility letter. Like, yes, I am the killer. I know all these details that the police don't know. Um, I mean, well, not that the police don't know, but that the public doesn't know. And the, only the killer could know or, outside or, or, of the police yeah, department. Yeah, all the police that investigated the... I uh, mean, I guess there's killers. an off chance that maybe he was someone who had some insider information into the investigation and was manipulating it for attention. I mean, it's possible, but it's very unlikely. But uh, it seems pretty likely that this is from... Oh, I'm sure they the took a hard Zodiac look at, at the people actually investigating and anybody, you know what I mean? Sure. They, they followed that lead, trust me. So then, uh, here's another one. Dear editor, he liked to write to the newspapers as well as the police. This is the Zodiac speaking. I am back with you. Tell Herb Kane, I am here. I have always been here. That city pig Tashi is good, but I am... Then he looks like he tried to write butt, but thought better of it smarter and better he will get tired then leave me alone i am waiting for a good movie about me who will play me i am now in control of all th all things yours truly zodiac guess he's basically saying like you don't even know how many i've right. heard at this point san francisco police department zero it's keeping score and already talking about movies being made about him yeah, he already he's already like he's yeah, already fantasizing. Please make a movie. This is uh, just part of a letter we read earlier. Um, this one's particularly messy, but this is the Zodiac speaking. I am the murderer of the taxi driver over by Washington Street and Maple Street last night. To prove this, here is a blood-stained piece of his shirt. I am the same man who did the people in the. Um, so that's the um, North Bay, North Bay area. So this is the, actually t referring to the Paul Stein murder, uh, which is a taxi driver he shot and uh, and uh, killed. Good old Paul. Yeah, the San Paul. Francisco police could hear could have caught me last night if they had searched the park properly instead of holding road uh, races races. Okay, with the motorcycles seeing who could make the most noise. The car drivers should have just parked their cars t and sat there quietly waiting for me to come out of cover. School children made nice targets. Uh, I think I shall wipe out a school bus. And you notice he only uses one S in bus there. Some morning. Just shoot out the front tire and then pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. This is, you know, so this is, that's his little, uh, his plan. Well, shoot out the tire and then when the kids come out, shoot them. He just keeps wanting to instill that fear because he knows that that's something that just strikes dread into a city. Now he wants, the idea of a school bus full of children just being murdered. And it did. It right. was very effective. And he uses it over and over again to just, like, jerk the leash of the city. And he does, you know, he, he really gets off on controlling not just, I mean, he, I think even maybe more than even killing people, he likes the fact that he's this mythological figure to the city, that he's this uh, almost, you know, inhuman force that they can't fucking reckon with, that mm -hmm. he's better than them, that he's smarter than them, that he's always going to outsmart them, he's always going to be one step ahead. Well, well the, he was right about that. Just the potential threat is so powerful that they have to bow, in a, in a way they have to bow to his wishes. They publish his shit in local newspapers. They have, Like I said, they have to, uh, they have to assign police to By the, the way, because of, because of this case, uh, you know, the, 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 if murderers send shit to editors and stuff now, they're, they just they don't, they don't publish that shit anymore. Right. 
because um, because of this case, because of how they saw how this could grip an entire city in panic and, and terror. They, they, you know, even if they threaten to kill people if the letters aren't published, they won't publish them now because they don't want celebrities. Uh, they don't want murderer celebrities. They don't want copycats of the Zodiac. They don't want people who are seeking this level of fame to emulate this this model that he created. Yeah. I mean, now that social media is here, they don't really need the media anymore. So it's interesting that we haven't seen, you know, because it's been a while since we've had a letter writing media celebrity killer. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a sketch of the Zodiac, but I think maybe we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, a sketch from a witness who claimed to have uh, seen him. I actually probably did see him. Um, let's get back to his kills. So after he killed the um, the teenage couple at fucking Makeout Point or whatever it was yeah. uh, over in uh, Vallejo, and after he shot the other couple... Um, just a few miles away, he uh, shot another couple, Brian Calvin uh, Hartnell, who was 20, and Cecilia Ann Shepard, who was 22. The Zodiac, wearing a hood and a shirt bearing a circle cross symbol, his little personal Zodiac symbol. Uh, and you can actually see a sketch of that there. So this is this is what the, you know they're just they're out having a picnic basically, and this fucker shows up. Oh God! You know that's yeah. not a fun yeah, that's not wonderful. a fun time. Uh, hey, a crazy dude with a gun. He tied them both up. He didn't use a gun this time. He decided he was going to stab instead. See what that was like. Uh, and he scrawled a message on uh, the couple's door. Afterwards, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that up on the screen here via this. Leave, he left them some uh, some pertinent information and shit, you know. Gives them a little little zodiac symbol, Vallejo, twelve twenty sixty eight seven four sixty nine September twenty seventh sixty nine six thirty by knife, like an artist signing his work. Yeah. I mean, he, this is a big step for that, and it's a big step. He's got a costume now. Yeah, so he's, he's no he's longer turning himself into a fucking supervillain at this point. Yeah, he's no longer like he, he he's been writing letters and shit at this point. He's already got that going, but he wants to be seen. He wants to be represented, and he wants to control that. So he makes this. Like he's just getting more and more full of himself, and it, it seems more and more needy for attention. Also, he, he gets he's desperate more, for it. He gets more into it. He ties the victims up. He stabs them to death as yeah, opposed remember to. Remember his first victims? Yeah, I mean, he just walks up and shoots them. It's very quick. It's like he, it's like, it's very well planned, but it's very quick. It's like boom, boom, you're dead. I'm gone. This time he chose to savor the act a little bit more, to feel that power and control for a little bit longer. I mean, and also you you have to think at this point, this outfit is also just a power symbol. It's like. He's he's terrifying these people. This bizarre character comes out with a gun and is threatening them. Like, <laughs> comply or die. And they're like, okay, well, if we just do what this crazy guy says, maybe we live. And, of course, he has no intention of letting them live. He's already planned. He's going to stab them to death. But he knows, yet again, people are going to comply. The, the fear is going to make you comply because you're going to do anything you think to survive, even if it's, you know, a long shot, which, you know, in this case, you pretty much know it is. I mean, some random guy comes out in the middle of nowhere and puts a gun at you. He doesn't want to be your friend. He wants to kill you. He wants to harm you. So once again, after approaching this couple, tying them up at gunpoint, and then stabbing them both, he goes to find a payphone, once again reports his own crime. Um, the, he, you know, he, he calls, he's like, I want to report a mor murder. No, a double murder. Then he says he's the perpetrator. Uh, when they went to the phone, it was still off the hook. He left it just hanging there. Uh, minutes later, at a Napa car wash on Main Street in Napa uh, by KVON, radio reporter Pat Stanley, only a few blocks from the sheriff's office, yet 27 miles from the crime scene, detectives were able to lift a still wet palm print from the telephone, but were never able to match it to any suspect. So they actually did get a palm print from the <coughs> phone. It's just that none of the suspects in the case that they were able to get their palm prints ever matched 
the palm print. And it matched nothing they had in their systems. Yeah. And remember, this is, uh, you know, and Pre- nothing, nothing, and, and you know, obviously, yeah. National this case is still active. Shit. They're still trying, like, this is still an active case that they're trying to close. I mean, more than likely, the Zodiac, you know, is dead or is so infirm. Well, I think we know who the Zodiac really is, but we'll get to that later. Oh, shit. There's a few theories out there, but only one, only one theory is actually credible. Okay. Um, Cecilia Shepard was conscious when the uh, the police arrived, um, provided the police with a detailed description of the attacker. Uh, Hartnell and Shepard were taken to uh, Queen of Valley Hospital in Napa by ambulance. Shepard lapsed into a coma during transport to the hospital and never regained consciousness. She died two days later, but Hartnell survived to recount his tale to the press. So once again, um, was able to kill one of the couple, didn't kill both of them. And this was his first knife, too. This is his first knife attack. What do you think that was about? Do you think it was like he wanted to get more intimate with it, or do you think he thought it was scarier to people and gorier to be tied up I mean, and stabbed to death. A possible and, theory is, I mean, look, with a knife, it's very easy to ensure someone is dead. He might have wanted them to live. He might have wanted one to survive. At but that it's point. a way more dangerous way to kill somebody. When someone's tied up, not really. I mean, I, I'm, like you said, he, he probably started off with a gun. Well, what I'm saying is, is it takes way more time to run up on a, a people, tie them up, Go through all the motions of stabbing them. It's way quicker to just walk up. Hey, get out of the car. Bang, bang, drive away. I really think. So he's exposing himself way more to do this. So I'm wondering what the drive to do the more dangerous way of killing people. Yeah, well, uh, my instinct is that he was doing this stuff for the thrill. He liked the thrill of the kill. And I think that while the first two. Uh, murders he did excited him. I think that he probably it was like you know he busted his nut a little early on that you know to just come boom 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 oh I did it oh my god oh my god oh my god you know I can't believe it and then you know he does it again and it's like maybe it's a little less thrilling so he's like fuck you know and it's almost like you know when you when you bring a dildo into the bedroom to spice up the sex life or something you know it's like ooh let's try some different toys you know I think that he wanted to savor the moment. I think he wanted it to last longer. I think he wanted it to be more intimate, and maybe he did want it to be more scary because he was, once again, always aware of how his crimes were being perceived. He wanted to be a celebrity. He wanted to be a larger-than-life figure, and it is possible that maybe he left one of them alive so that they could describe his crazy get-up and stuff so that he could this this image here could uh could strike fear into I mean, people's it's, hearts. It's a fucking profound, compelling image to look at. You I mean you, you look at this and it's like there's just not much reference to really think about. Like most killers, they avoid at all cost having any sort of a, a, any association with their crimes, and to have something like this associated with you is just bizarre. And I mean, and to do it intentionally to report yourself, I mean, that's not a normal behavior for a murderer. He was also sloppy here for the first time. We, we heard the story earlier about there, there being a dude that was moaning. And he made sure, not only to make sure that that dude was dead, but he put two slugs in the other body just to make sure it was dead, too. So he's, you know, and here, both of them survived to give information about him. You know, so he wasn't very careful to make sure that they were dead here. Yeah. Which is interesting. It's almost like he wanted them to maybe survive it so that they could describe him speak so that of the this legend. right right because it doesn't make sense to me that a dude that's been about just blowing people away and double tapping them to make sure that they're dead is gonna just stab people not quite enough to kill them so that they get this picture in the media you know uh it was only two weeks later so notice the the timetable of his crimes is escalating here too and also the pattern breaks here it's october 11th 1969 A passenger entered the cab driven by Paul Stein at the intersection of Mason and Geary Streets, uh, one block west from Union Square, San Francisco, requesting to be taken to Washington and Maple Street in Presidio Heights. For reasons unknown, Stein drove one block past Maple to Cherry Street. The passenger then shot Stein once in the head with a 9mm. 
took Stein's wallet and car keys, tore away a section of Stein's blood-stained uh, shirt tail. The passenger was observed by three teenagers across the street at 9.55 p.m., called the police, told them a crime was in progress. They observed a man wiping down the cab before walking away toward the Presidio, one block to the north. Two blocks from the crime scene, Officer Don Fook responded to the call, observed a white man walking along the sidewalk and stepping onto a stairway leading up to the front yard of one of the homes on the north side of the street. The encounter lasted 5 to 10 seconds. Fook estimated the man to be about 35 to 45 years old, while the teenagers who observed the killer in Stein's cab mentioned he was 25 to 30. Uh, they described him as being about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, kind of matching up with the other description that was given previously. Uh, the radio dispatcher had... Uh, Alerted to be on the lookout for a black suspect. <laughs> Oops, he's not black, so they drove past him without stopping. The mix-up in descriptions remains unexplained. Does it? Does it really? Does uh, it, though? He I've was, got a theory on this one. <laughs> he was a docky. A search ensued, but no suspects were found. The three teen witnesses worked with the police artist to prepare a composite sketch of Stein's killer. A few days later, the police returned... Uh, and that's where we get this uh, image, which how this is the work of a sketch artist, I'm kind of curious about because that's a pretty shitty yeah, drawing. Yeah, it's not the best, but... Uh, but this is the the sketch that the teenagers provided police. This is the uh, depiction of the Zodiac that the, uh, the, the, the kids provided. Um, kind of looks uh, a little bit dorky. Maybe I it's mean, just the glasses. I don't know. You know what he looks like to me? Every other asshole I see on the street. Right. That's the point. Oh, hey there. Sorry to interrupt your uh, your episode and all that, but uh, just want to remind you to, uh, you know. Join the Pessimist Productions Patreon. Just do it. Like, come on. Seriously, like, what, what do we want me to say? You've heard the sales pitch. You know, it's, you know, what's there. You know what? You know what's there. Just go. Just freaking do it. Stop being a pussy. Like, I know. Just, quit being a little bitch and do it. Do it for America. Do it for outer space. I don't know. I don't care what geographical location you do it for. Anywhere. Any time. Just do it for yourself. Do it for your mama. Do it for your, for your little dog. Do it for your kitty cat. Just do it. Um, now, he writes, after this crime, the Zodiac writes to the police, which is not at all unusual for him at that point. That's It's at that point where he, he, he threatens his little bus yeah. massacre. I think we already took a look at the letter. Yeah, it was, it was, it's what he mentioned, because initially... The police did not connect the Zodiac with this crime. They thought it was just uh, the, this cab driver just, was just robbed and killed. Because it didn't match the profile. No. This is a major mistake from the Zodiac, too, because there was witnesses, there was a description, there was no reason for him to say, to raise the profile of this case by taking credit for it, but he just couldn't resist. Well, he did this in a city, too. I mean, he didn't, right. he didn't just do this in the middle of the fucking woods like the other killings. I think he was bored. Yeah, he, he was like he want. I mean, like he was honestly inviting them to catch him at this point. Like, oh, yeah. yeah it, it just seems like as we tell the tale of his kills, they start out. I, you know, I, I did, like I said, I didn't know much about him starting. And when you said, you know, he, he did the flashlight cop thing. I, I was like, wow, what a smart and efficient way to kill people. But that's not what it's about for him. That was just dipping my toes and I want to be as safe as possible and get it done. You're right. Like now he's moving into the city. And he's doing shit, you know, where there's people walking by well, and like, killers, eyes on him and, and you, houses. You, and, you always see them up in the ante because, like Chidi said, the thrill is only so much. Now it's, I'm in the middle of a fucking city. There's people everywhere. He wrote them a big uh, seven-page letter. Yeah, I mean, he sent, he sent them some cryptograms on uh, November 8th. He, sent, he wrote them a long seven-page letter on um, November 9th where he actually claimed that he a policeman actually stopped him and spoke to him 3 minutes after he shot Stein uh excerpts from the letter were post were published in the Chronicle on November 12th including the Zodiac's claim that same day officer Duke Fook 
I'm sorry, Don Fook wrote a memo explaining that he had happened the night of the Stein murder. So he's the one that saw him. Uh, on December 20th, 1969, exactly one year after the first murders, the Zodiac mailed a letter to um, Belly, Belly, that included another swatch of Stein's shirt. The Zodiac said he wanted Belly, Belly to help him. I don't know what that means. Um, pretty fucking crazy. This was a, uh, oh yeah, this is, um, this is that host that was, uh, the Zodiac actually called in yeah. to a, the Jim a, a broadcast to, it is, I mean, I don't well, know. He claimed he was, he was actually going to meet him at his office. Yeah. So this is supposedly the Zodiac making a phone call. And these videos aren't titled properly, so I might play the wrong one before I get to the right one. So just bear with me. There we go. Zodiac. Let me get to the A symbol that now stands for terror in San Francisco. Today, there was a possibly significant development in the terrifying case of the man who calls himself Zodiac and has boasted that he is responsible for five murders in the last nine months. In Zodiac's latest letter last week, he threatened to make a busload of school children his next victims. Since then, school buses have been discreetly guarded and parents' fears have openly risen. This morning, the people of San Francisco heard a man who claimed to be Zodiac talking on the air during a television conversation program with attorney Melvin Belli and the program's host, Jim Dunbar. So that bell eye guy, I guess the Zodiac sent him a shirt piece after that. That was the voice of a man who called himself the Zodiac Killer. He's talking to attorney Melvin Belli by phone on a television conversation show. This bizarre situation began at 2 o'clock this morning when the so-called Zodiac telephone police headquarters. He said he was sick, he needed help, and he wanted to talk to Belli on television. All the scheduled guests were canceled from the show on the ABC station KGO. Belli waited for Zodiac to call on the private line. The phone was not tapped. The killer telephoned 12 times. He spoke very little with attorney Belli trying to draw him out. Jim. Jim said, well, maybe he's afraid of being beaten up or something like that now. Um, what, 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 what can I say? Well, why don't we just ask Sam to tell us a little bit more about what he's feeling right now. What do you, tell us about uh, your, your feelings, Sam. You know, just tell us anything you want to. And then we'll come back and I'll give you a specific answer to this question when you're going to the gas chamber. Uh, stay with us so I can answer that for you. But uh, w w will you uh, attend on Jim just a minute and tell me, tell him what, what you're feeling or, or talk to us? Just tell us what's going on in, in, inside you right now, Sam. Please. I have Headache. Right. How long have you had those headaches, Sam? In a long time? Since I killed a kid. If, if it all boils down to the question of you're giving yourself up, if you could be assured that you wouldn't get capital punishment for myself. I don't want to give myself I, up. Huh? So I want to kill those kids. Bill I finally arranged to meet Zodiac in Daly City, a suburb south of San Francisco, to talk in person. The attorney waited in an office building, but Zodiac never showed. I asked Bill I if he thought the man who called really was the Zodiac killer. I can't. Negative. I, I, I can't say. All I can say is this man needed help. This man seemed like a man who was coming up to a storm or to a climax. And th th this very blood-curdling thing. Children kill, and then the sort of an agonized uh, cutoff. And, enough to turn your hair whiter than mine. So inside the thrift shop, St. Vincent de Paul, attorney Melvin Belli and the San Francisco police waited for the Zodiac killer. The man did not show. So now all we can do is wait perhaps for that next phone call from the man who calls himself Zodiac, who has killed five and says he's going to kill again. Dick Shoemaker, ABC News, San Francisco. We'll be back with more news in a moment. Yeah, I'm not hearing you through my headphones. I turned that off. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, what What's the um, consensus well, on whether or not that was him? Well, it's not known for sure. Um, it does appear that the that another piece of the bloody shirt was mailed to that attorney. 
Um, I mean, so there is some potential for it being true, but... But we don't... I mean, there's not... It's not known. It's not known for sure. Uh, the Zodiac may well have, um, you know, sent the piece, but not been the guy on the phone, but he just figured, like, oh, this adds to my legend, whatever. Right. Um, maybe it'll even throw him off the trail by making this fucker seem authentic. Um, not that he seems overly concerned with them being off his trail, for the most part. Oh, no, he wants them on the trail. Yeah, he likes the cat and mouse game. Um, so he, he fucking, uh, next little, you know, uh, activity from the Zodiac, um, the Modesto attack. That, and this one's actually really close to where I grew up. Yes. Um, so yeah. How far from Modesto did you grow up? Uh, not far. I'd say 30 miles or so. Well, on the night of March 22nd, 1970, Kathleen Johns was driving from uh, San Bernardino to Petaluma yep. to visit her mother. She was seven months pregnant and had a, her 10-month-old daughter beside her. While heading west on Highway 132 near Modesto, a car behind her began honking its horn and flashing its lights. She pulled off to the side of the road and stopped for some fucking reason. Yeah, I don't know why you'd stop, but... The man in the parked car uh, behind her approached her car, stated he observed her right rear wheel was wobbling, and offered to tighten her lug nuts. After finishing his work, the man drove off, yet when Johns pulled forward to re-enter the highway, the wheel almost immediately came off the car. So he probably actually loosened them. Uh, the man returned, offering to drive her to the nearest gas station for help. She and her daughter climbed into his car. During the car ride, um, they passed several service stations, but the man didn't stop. For about 90 minutes, he drove back and forth around the back roads near Tracy. When Johns asked why he was not stopping, he would change the subject. When the driver finally stopped at an intersection, Johns jumped out uh, with her daughter and hid in a field. The driver searched for her using a flashlight... Uh, telling her he would not hurt her before eventually giving up. Unable to find her, he got back in his car and drove off. Uh, she then hitched a ride to the police station in Patterson. Uh, when Johns gave her statement to the sergeant on duty, she noticed the police composite sketch of Paul Stein's killer and recognized him as the man who had abducted her and her child. Fearing he would come back and kill them all, uh, the sergeant had Johns wait in the dark at the nearby Mills restaurant. When he, her car was found, it had been gutted and torched. Um, most accounts say he threatened to kill her and her daughter while driving them around, but at least one police report disputes that. Johns' account to Paul Avery of the Chronicle indicates her abductor left his car and searched for her in the dark with a flashlight. However, in one report she made to police, she stated he did not leave the vehicle. So, whether her story is the least bit credible, who fucking knows? Yeah, but I mean, it's hard It's hard to know if, if she really had this encounter or not, but... It maybe. sounds like details are contradictory in different accounts, and the story kind of evolved as time went on, so... Yeah, this is one I of the more famous ones, because, I mean, if she did, in fact, if it was the Zodiac, then she, got, she was extremely lucky and survived. But also, it is strange, because normally he killed, I mean... You could, I guess you could argue from one perspective, maybe he was toying with her and was waiting to kill her at a certain time or a certain place, but also maybe, you know, like she said, it, it never happened. I mean, yeah. He made it up. It could have been his first foray into trying something new again, you know, like the last time he did this ambush people, tie them up, stab them, you know, maybe it was a t an attempt at like kidnapping them and taking them somewhere so he could spend even more time with them, you know, who knows? That's kind of spooky, though. I mean, even if it is untrue, it's still kind of a spooky yeah, story. Yeah, it is a it is a spooky fucking tale. And the thing is, uh, well, my thing about the fear that a lot of people have, it's like it's kind of like the highwayman thing. Like you're just going down the road, and then suddenly this crazy just uh, you see a car flash, and you oh they're trying to help me yet again. It's it, it's interesting the dynamic of trust that people have for strangers. Well, the thing is that after the shooting of Paul Stein in the city. There's no more absolutely confirmed Correct. Zodiac kills. There's suspected kills. There's but... crimes that he's suspected of, but that was the last thing that was definitively tied to him. Now, he went on a major letter-writing campaign 
continuing to uh, communicate with everyone and try to maintain his uh, his at- attention, all eyes on the Zodiac kind of thing. His his aggressive campaign of self promotion. Uh, he was sending his ciphers left and right. Uh, one of them was was solved at one point, and it just it basically just said like I like killing people, it's fun, all this stuff. Well, it actually promised to reveal his identity, but but all actually revealed was in fact yeah like, he was yeah that's how he teased him. It's like I'm gonna tell you my name if, if you but saw it this. Just, it was actually like a high school teacher, like the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, all these organizations that tried to crack it. And it was like a couple of uh, just I think it was a high school teacher that finally solved the cipher. It's pretty crazy. Um, he started he was sending all kinds of bomb. He was sending bomb threats to the newspapers, just really trying to get people's attention, you know, trying to use the credibility of the murders he committed. To but he wasn't doing he wasn't killing anymore. Well, it's not really known if he was killing anymore. Well, See, but he, if he was, why would why wouldn't he, he have 30, publicized it? Well, I don't know, but he claimed to have thirty seven kills at least. Well, yeah, I mean, he claimed all kinds of stuff. I mean, he was like, we know he did, we know he committed murders, but yes. he also was an exaggerator. You know, he kind of came from the uh, the Paul's ego school of pour a little hot sauce on it, right? Even my murder spree needs a little bit of exaggeration. Every good story does. Uh, he sent postcards uh, to people that he hated or enemies and taunting them and shit. Um, he, you know, he said that he sh- he claimed. Uh, you, we actually read the letter earlier where he was mad that people weren't wearing his buttons, like he demanded. Uh, so he said he shot a man in a parked car with a thirty-eight. Uh, he was possibly referring to the murder of Sergeant Richard Radich a week earlier on June 15th at 5.25 a.m. Radich was writing a parking ticket in his squad car when an assailant shot him in the head with a 38 caliber pistol. Radich died 15 hours later. SFPD denies the Zodiac was involved in this murder. But who really knows? But why did, I mean, what's the evidence that it, they, what's their evidence against it? Yeah. He claims credit for it, but... It's not really known whether he was claiming credit for murders that he didn't actually do. Uh, included with the letter was a Philip 66 roadmap of the San Francisco Bay Area. On the image of Mount Diablo, the Zodiac had drawn a cross circle similar to the ones he'd included in previous correspondence. At the top of the cross circle, he placed a zero and then a three, six, and nine. Uh, the accompanying instruction stated the zero was to set... Uh, to Mag Magnetic North. Uh, the letter also included a 32-letter cipher that the killer claimed would, in conjunction with the code, lead to the location of a bomb he had buried and set to go off in the fall. The cipher was never decoded, and the alleged bomb was never located. The killer signed the note with his usual symbol, and in this note, he claims that uh, his victim count is up to 12, and that the same, you know, this SFPD is still at zero. zero. So, I mean, possibly just still building the myth up, building the legend up, saying I killed way more than I actually did, or maybe he did kill 12. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's a, it's a total mystery. I mean, unlike the, the Jack the Ripper stuff, where you can pretty comfortably look at the crimes that were attributed to him later and say, like, this doesn't really seem like the same MO, you can't really say that with Zodiac. So who knows how many fucking people he killed. Right. Could have been as little as five. Could have been way more. Uh, on July 24th, 1970, he took credit for Kathleen John's abduction four months later after the incident. In a July 26th, 1970 letter, the Zodiac paraphrased a song from the Mikado, adding his own lyrics about making a little list of the ways he planned to torture his slaves in paradise. So now he's getting into weird theological shit like the people I've killed will become my slaves in the next world, basically. Wow. The letter was signed with an X with a large exaggerated cross circle symbol and a new score reading uh, 13 to zero. A final note at the bottom of the letter state stated uh, P.S. The Mount Diablo code concerns radians plus number sign inches along the radians. I don't know, num- number of inches along the radians, I guess. In 1981, a close examination of the radian hint by Zodiac researcher Gareth Penn 
led to the discovery that a radiant angle, when placed over the map per Zodiac's instructions, pointed to the location of two Zodiac attacks. So just another way of fucking with people. Right. And he wanted to make sure that they got the clue and they weren't smart enough to get it. So he gave them another clue and they was like, because I want them to figure out how fucking funny that was. <laughs> so on October 7th, 1970, the Chronicle received a three by five inch card signed by the Zodiac with his little symbol. Small cross reportedly drawn with blood. The card's message was formed by pasting words and letters from an edition of the Chronicle and 13 holes were punched across the card. Inspector Armstrong and Toshi agreed it was highly probable the card came from the Zodiac. Um, at this point, he's, he's more of a letter writer than anything else. He's just kind of trying to keep his name out there in the press. But the public is kind of losing interest because... They're not you know, any, well, one, they're not any closer to solving it, and the murders have stopped. Not only that, but he's played the little boy who cried wolf a lot with them. I'm going to blow up a school bus. I planted a bomb. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do At that. At this point, they kind of realize that, yeah, this guy's dangerous, but... He's, he's jerking kind, us around. Yeah, he's kind of full of hot air, too. Uh, on October 30th, 1966... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I've got a little um, ahead of myself there. On October 20th, uh, 27th, 1970, Chronicle reporter Paul Avery who had been covering the Zodiac case, received a Halloween card signed with the letter Z and the Zodiac circle cross. Handwritten on the card was a note, Peekaboo, you are doomed. The threat was taken seriously, received front page story in the Chronicle. Soon after receiving the letter, Avery received an anonymous letter alerting him to the similarities between the Zodiac's activities and the unsolved murder of Cherie Jo Bates. Uh, which had occurred four years earlier at the City College in Riverside in the greater Los Angeles area, more than 400 miles uh, south of San Francisco. He reported his findings to the Chronicle, November 16, 1970. Yet another empty threat. Nothing came of it. Paul Avery was not murdered by the Zodiac. So at this point, he's threatened to do a lot of stuff that he hasn't really followed through on. Never shot up the school bus. Uh, never, or yeah, never, bomb never, never blew up the fucking mountain, never, uh, killed Paul Avery. Um, so here, here's some, uh, that Sherry Joe Bates thing that happened in 1966 before the first Zodiac murders. Uh, she was a student at a uh, Riverside community college Spent the evening at the campus library annex until it closed at 9 p.m. Neighbors reported hearing a scream around 10.30, and Bates was found dead uh, the next morning, a short distance from the library between two abandoned houses slated to be demolished for campus renovations. The wires in her Volkswagen distributor cap had been pulled out. She was brutally beaten and stabbed to death. A man's Timex watch with a torn wristband was uh, found nearby. The watch had stopped at 1224, but the police attack, believe the attack occurred uh, much earlier. So I don't know. I, I, I don't really think this is a Zodiac thing because he would have claimed it. I think he would have. Yeah, Maybe. It does, it, it, he would have claimed it, and it doesn't really fit his any of the other you know yeah he was not his mo did evolve so i guess maybe you could say that he tried something but like he started very carefully this would have been before his first murder right yes um well i mean if it's just no i mean technically well i guess it's a zodiac it was before his first murder the first official zodiac murder well the first official zodiac but if if he in fact did it that would be his first murder right but i'm saying like if we're just saying like this is predates the ones we know he did yeah correct But it's more brutal and more personal. And then he goes and he's very careful for a while and then gets back to the more... It doesn't... It's a weird arc. It doesn't really seem to fit. Yeah. um, Probably not him, but you never know. Maybe. And there's a bunch of other little murders that have been attributed to him. Um, There was uh, Robert Domingos, 18, and Linda Edwards, 17, shot and killed on June 4th, 1963. So that's years before even that murder on a beach near Gaviota. Uh, Edwards and Domingos were identified as possible Zodiac victims because of specific similarities between their attacks and the Zodiac attack at uh, Lake Berryessa six years later. So was that a proto? Was that a young fledgling Zodiac uh, acting out his fantasy? We already talked about Sherry Joe Bates. Uh, Donna Lass, 25, last seen on September 6, 1970, in Stateville, Nevada, a postcard with an advertisement from Forest Pine Condominiums. 
Uh, pasted on the back was received at the Chronicle on March 22nd, 1971. It has been interpreted as the Zodiac claiming Lass's disappearance as a victim. No evidence has been uncovered to connect Lass's appearance with the Zodiac killer definitively. Hmm. Uh, his last letter ever came on, and uh, there was, by the way, there were some fake Zodiac letters sent in too, of course. Um, January 29th, 1974, his final letter sent to his favorite paper, The Chronicle. Uh, he basically wrote them to discuss uh, movies he was talking about The Exorcist. He said it was the best satirical comedy that I have ever seen. <laughs> cool. He misspelled comedy. He spelled it with an I. Oh. Uh, the letter included a snippet of the verse from the, the Mikado. I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? No. Mikado. And an unusual symbol at the bottom that has remained unexplained by researchers. Uh, Zodiac concluded the letter with a new score, Me 37 yeah. San Francisco PD zero. So that is ultimate claim of uh, 37 comes from it was derived from one of his uh, final letters to police did say that he was going to go low profile that from now on he was not going to kill as the Zodiac. He was going to kill people in a more low key manner and make them try and try to make them look like accidents or random crimes so that he w- they wouldn't be added to his tally. Uh, but this probably he probably he might have done that just to add to the credibility yeah, of him claiming to, these. Yeah, that's just to add to the fear surrounding him too. Like he could still be out there. Right. Anytime there's an unsolved stabbing or something, it's like, Zodiac. is it him? Is it the Zodiac? Yep. Is it him? Is he back? But also in a way that's kind of almost worse because you just never know. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, this guy's obviously willing to kill. He's done it before, and now it's. More ambiguous. Well, maybe I'll stop killing. Maybe I won't. Who knows what I'm going to do? I guess the Mikado is a is an opera. Okay, cool. So he was apparently a fan. Uh, there were some other letters that were sent later on that uh, they think might have been from the Zodiac, but he didn't identify. He didn't use his symbol. Um, let me see if I can find you guys a picture of the final Zodiac letter. Cool. The final letter. Yeah, there's there is a weird fucking symbol here. Um, here's the the letter. I'm pulling it up on the screen now. Hmm. Wait a minute. K. I R K. <gasps> I'm the Zodiac. Oh my we God! Found the culprit. Dun dun dun! I saw and think The Exorcist was the best satirical comedy I have ever seen. Signed yours truly. He plunged himself into the billowy wave, and an echo arose from the suicide grave. Uh. Tit willow, tit willow, tit willow. P.S. If I if I do not see this note in your paper, I will do something nutty, nasty, <laughs> nasty, which you know I'm capable of doing. And then his new, not quite as powerful symbol, I guess. Um, and then whatever gibberish that is, me thirty seven. I mean. So, but there's a million. He's getting I mean, like he's like kind of like ah, I'm tired of this whole Zodiac but I mean, label. But there's a million fucking theories as to why. He's, I mean, like he no longer killed the Zodiac. Maybe he stopped. Maybe he died. Maybe he's arrested. You know, we don't really know. Or like I said, maybe he just went underground. He said, you know what? Tired of the media attention. Maybe he got sick of it. And now he's just gonna fucking. He, he decided just to kill, keep killing people, in a less you know flashy way. Yeah, maybe a little less, a little more low profile, a little bit more le- less conspicuous. I mean, like, if you look at it, the last crime definitively attributed to him is the one where he um, had witnesses, the police supposedly talked to him. I mean, even he, though he was playing this dangerous game, maybe that kind of freaked him out. Maybe that scared him off of, of wanting to do something that was so high profile. Maybe he kind of weaned himself down from it, just settled for writing some letters for a while until even that lost its luster and he kind of just, you know, 
let himself fade into obscurity or whatever. Right. Or maybe he died. Maybe he went to jail. Maybe he really did just go underground and start killing people in more random ways that were less traceable to him. Um, all we know is that last time he know last time someone known to be the Zodiac communicated, it was uh, to let them know that he liked the Exorcist and. If they don't publish his letter, he's going to kill some more people, and he's already killed 37 people, you know. Um, and he's keeping he's keeping that score. The, the San Francisco police just can't keep up. Yep, and that's basically where the investigation's at to this day, right? Uh, yeah, uh, current status of investigation, uh, they say the case is inactive, uh, citing caseload pressure and resource demands, effectively closing the case. However, they reopened the case uh, sometime before March 2007. Uh, the case is open in Napa County and in the city of Riverside. So they're still trying. They're still doing their damnedest to maybe catch his, his ass, but... You teased it earlier, and I've been fucking sitting over here waiting. Who is it, dude? Who right, is he? Well, there's there's a few theories... Oh, God, dude. There's a few theories. So many people have taken credit for this shit. All right, so I'm just going to play a few of them. Okay. okay. Uh, some of these videos aren't labeled properly, so just bear with me if I play the wrong shit. This, Darlene Farron yeah, became this is the, one the Zodiac of the Killer's third victim on the 4th of July, 1969. Shot to death in her car at a Vallejo Park. Was this man who died three months ago was at this age blurry 91, man. was he responsible for the wave of terror that gripped Northern California I don't know, I can't even see his fucking ago? face. Farron's sister told us from her home in Oregon that she's absolutely sure of it. We've got the man. That's the man. Pam Huckabee says her sister had been afraid of a man who was stalking her, a man that Huckabee had seen at the restaurant where Farron worked. Former California Highway Patrol Officer Lyndon Lafferty has just published a book claiming that the Fairfield man is indeed the Zodiac Killer. He'd been collecting evidence since first encountering the man at this I-80 rest stop in 1970. It's like I was looking in the eyes of death. I've never had an experience. By like the way, in buy my book. In 1987, Lafferty if you want to hear Pam more Huckabee about what it's like to stare into the eyes of death. Sister. And that's when Huckabee posed as a salesperson at the man's front door to see him face to face. He opened that front door. My knees, I should have fell to the ground because he had those eyes and that loose lip yeah, uh, that I'll never forget. Huck, Huck is it your name? I so, Huckster? Him. Oh, dear. This has all been very, very shocking. News 10 broke the news that the man profiled in Lafferty's uh, book actually died sorry, this, in this, February. This is almost laughable. So, this is laughable. Yeah, you find some random old Lafferty dead guy, but like, that he's Zodiac. Relieved. It was him. But the it sister of the guy. Zodiac killer's third victim expressed profound disappointment that the man she believes to be responsible will never be held to answer. I wanted him much suggestion. I wanted one more look at him. One more look at him. Okay, well, that's 50 gibberish. Years after terror gripped the San Francisco yeah, this is the guy who claims the Zodiac Killer was his dad. Yeah, one evidence. Of the Zodiac Killer. In a just-released book, a man claims to have proof that his own father is, in fact... You know what's book. Really it's really interesting killer. that these books that you have Zodiac to buy to, to hear the whole story, they've all, they've all discovered who the Zodiac is. It's my daddy, or it's this guy. This old dude that just passed yeah, away. He, he just now died. Yeah, some dude's like, God damn, my dad was a dick. I <laughs> bet he was the Zodiac killer. I tell you what, I swear to God, one time I went and knocked on that old man's door, the one that just died, I looked into his eyes and my knees buckled from the sheer evil. Because <laughs> that's, ev that's how evil works. Yeah. If you see an evil person... Uh, I mean oh. Dude, yeah, when the Zodiac, you know, he, sometimes he would, he would get a little hungry, go down to his local hamburger shack, you know. You know, I want a burger and fries. I hate that hyperbolic bullshit. They, they, they would look into his eyes as they fucking hand him his burger and their knees would buckle, dude. It's I mean, like, Bill, Bill Cosby raped like fucking a hundred women or whatever the fuck. And you people people worked with him for years and never like, oh my God, I just knew when I was on that sitcom with Bill, he was pure evil. Well, that's how you know it's bullshit. You can't just look at someone and know they're fucking pure evil. Yeah, it's just dumb. It doesn't work that way. That's not how evil works. He's killing at least five people all while taunting police with letters and cryptic messages. The case has become one of the most chilling in American history. Chilling. Brr. Late December 1968, 
two young lovers were murdered. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, to the we, we did this better. Come on. All right, is this the guy? I was never concerned that anything bad was going to happen other than maybe being stuck out there tied up all night. Never, That's one of the victims right there. Then suddenly, a swift movement. Where the fuck is the guy? One man says it is, and he's just released a book detailing his findings. All right, so that's the, his dad versus the picture of the Zodiac. The man behind the horrific serial Does bear a resemblance. I mean, but like I said when we yeah. looked at that he earlier, it looks like every douchebag you walk by in public, you know? Kind of looks like my dad, too. Through that search, he believes he's come across this evidence that links his biological father to the Zodiac Killer. All right, what well, you got? Zodiac Killer. Zodiac, Zodiac, Zodiac killer. killer. Zodiac. And here you have the sketch that was given by one of the survivors of one of the attacks. And there's his father. And you look at him side by side. Mike Brooks and the Dream Team in with me. I uh, look at him side by I'm side. I'm convinced. Mike. I mean, that is so Vinny, even, even down to the mouth and, and, the, and the hair. And, and the, I mean, it almost looks like it's... Oh, my God. We have to fill yeah, air time. Yeah, I mean... It, it could me, be him. The, the, the best, so <laughs> this best reminds me of those Maury episodes where they put a picture of the dude and the kid next to it. And he's like, look, Maury, see? He's got, my, he got his nose. He got his eyes. He got his lips. Look at that hair, Maury. Tell me that ain't his hair. Apparently gets in trouble for having a child because... Tyrone, you are not the father. Time for that. Now this guy's, this guy's dad, dad, you are not the Zodiac. You are not the Zodiac. Were some of the All right, enough bullshit. Book sales, dude. Yeah. Enough bullshit. So let, let's sell some books. Roll, roll, roll. All right, that has nothing to do with anything. Let, let's just figure out who the... I mean, this this is a scene from Dirty Harry with the, uh, the Scorpio killer. Got who it. is based on the, the Zodiac. Zodiac. Oh, and clearly. The, the reason he's threatening, a, a menacing a bus full of children right here is, of course, because the Zodiac's famous threat to, you know shoot school kids getting off the bus but we all know who the fucking zodiac killer really is well you do i don't you don't know who it is no it's fucking easy easy e no i used to be a doubter too carefree living my life without knowing the truth but now he's all i see at night oh shit dude eyes that pierce your soul the mouth. I can never figure out if it's smiling or frowning. Ted Cruz. Family man. Senator. Candidate for President of the United States. Serial killer. Does this look like a man who's standing like a normal human being? Or perhaps, rather, a man trying to find a comfortable position in his human skin suit? Wake up, America. No, I won't stop until the world knows the truth. Or at least it's put on his Wikipedia page. Like, early life and family, legal career, U.S. Senate, Serial killer allegations. I haven't ate. I haven't slept. I won't stop until Ted Cruz. No! Don't you mean the Zodiac killer? No. You know that this is just a meme, right? <laughs> it's not it's a never meme. It's just a meme. It's not a meme, Paul. So that's it. Yep. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz done it, dude. Ted Cruz wow. is the Zodiac done it. killer. Dude. What a, oh, I knew it. I, I, Booker like eater. nothing that he did makes up for the fact that he's Ted Cruz. So. Like I, I, you know, I thought the Zodiac was pretty smart and pretty, you know, whatever for a serial killer. He's pretty cool. He got away with it and shit. But if it's really Ted Cruz, he's just lame. No, dude, just the, lame, the dude. Same, the same guy that had a fucking booger, dude. He's the, the Zodiac's pretty much devolved in his old age. Ted Cruz could literally go into space and deflect a giant meteorite, saving humanity, and he'd still be lame. <laughs> no, there actually is this weird uh, meme about Ted Cruz being the Zodiac. Or I remember he tweeted about it. He actually got in on it during the uh, election. I am not the Zodiac. Uh, so here's, I don't know, this might be stuff we've already covered or not. This is five mysterious facts about the Zodiac how, killer. How, how bizarre. You have to fucking disavow being the Zodiac. This Northern California killer definitely had a method to his madness. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts and our special Sexy. series about famous murderers. Just blood today's installment, on the we'll be screen. counting down the five most notable and fascinating pieces of information surrounding this disturbing serial killer who terrorized California throughout the late 60s and early 70s. We already he know all this. Yeah, go I was going to say, what are the, what are the, page, what the, are the chances we haven't covered every last on one of these things? Let's see. So, Zodiac movie. Wait. It's not in time for Zodiac. 
people have Four. come forward people to claim relatives of the Zodiac. We knew that. We knew that one. Killer. Ted Cruz is the Zodiac. Zodiac all. I fight on the. They didn't. Blah 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 blah. Even comment the Axe Five. Let's see what they got for number one. Exorcist as quarter with a final row. Oh, he likes the Exorcist. Yeah, we already knew all this shit. So. That was that what video. Watch Mojo takes fucking five minutes to say we said in a fucking mere hour and fifteen. There you go, dude. Fuck you, Watch Mojo. Pieces of shit. Boom. You guys might have the fucking succinct market corner. All right, so here's something we maybe didn't. We have really, the long bloviating market. Here's something cover. we didn't cover as much uh, that might be interesting. This is uh, the code breaking aspect of the Zodiac. Because uh, I kind we kind of I kind of referenced how he had these codes and stuff. But we didn't really get into it too much, so let's take a little deeper dive into that real quick. When the Zodiac killer or anybody makes a cipher, uh, they start with the text that they want to uh, transmit. This is plain English. Then they make a key. This, this the, tells them how to turn the uh, plain text in English into an enciphered, hard to read text. Mm -hmm. When we work in code breaking, it's the opposite process. We got the code. We also want to reconstruct that same key that the, uh, in this case, the Zodiac Killer made and use that key in reverse to convert the cipher back into plain So the History Channel is doing a, did a series on trying to crack the Zodiac's Knight, code uh, and discover who the Zodiac of is. At the University of Southern California. Uh, my research area. I assume they were not successful process. considering that we never heard like what breaking news. No. And I mean, look, dude, the um, way he liked to fuck with the press, them, there's a good chance uh, that they don't mean shit. That yeah, like maybe did. one of them or two of them, maybe the one they figured out was an actual cipher, but then he was just like, oh yeah, they figured that one out. Now I'll just put a bunch more and I'll just put the symbols in random order and keep I mean, them endlessly chasing their tails. I mean, there's a possibility that they could be solved, but even if they were solved, they might not necessarily reveal the killer. To a code, and we want to retrieve back out the original text. I mean, so, uh, because Carmel's remember, remember one was solved, which, in which he claimed he would reveal his identity, and he didn't. Yeah, I'll go ahead and read you guys the uh, the solved cipher. Yeah, I'd like to see how he worded it and shit. Zodiac ciphers, what we know. Um. The one that they solved. Yeah, the one that the school teacher solved was like, I enjoy killing for fun or something. Da 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 da. Intriguing clues. Alphabet. Blah 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 blah. Why don't you just give me the fucking text? Okay. Fuck no, dude. Read Here it is. I kill both. Something. Night and day. <laughs> Here it is. I kill both night and day. I live by the gun. Bear. Like, don't... Hasn't somebody typed this out? Why are you having to, like, read somebody's <laughs> shitty hand? Nobody, nobody on the internet and the history has, like, transcribed this? Yeah, I don't know. I can't... This fucking article doesn't for some reason... Where, Even dude. though it's super detailed, it just shows like a. It basically just, I mean, like it basically just says, "I like killing people is fun and just fucks with them." It doesn't really, it doesn't reveal shit. It's just a total red herring. Yeah, there's, but there's no identity. They reveal. said it was the easiest of the ciphers, and that it actually seems way less complicated than the other ones. So uh, the way the guy solved the code, this high school teacher, is he figured the first letter would be I. And he figured that the word kill or killed would appear somewhere in there. And he was right on both of those assumptions. And once he figured out that the first letter was I and that kill would be in there somewhere, it was uh, it was pretty easy for him to crack the rest of the code after that. I mean, comparatively easy. Now, the fact that the Zodiac killer was obviously talented at math and, you know, you obviously had some sort of math and science knowledge has led some people to believe that maybe Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, is uh, the Zodiac Killer. It is a conspiracy theory. It's a long shot. But I guess the police actually took it seriously enough to do an investigation to see, like, maybe the Unabomber is the Zodiac Killer. Uh, 
The, uh, the new twist to the investigation was spurred by calls to police from amateur sleuths who were struck by similarities among Kaczynski, the Unabomber's crimes, and details from the saga of the Zodiac, a never-identified man who shocked the nation with his string of slangs and taunting letters in the 60s and 70s. Among the possible links are that Kaczynski lived in the Bay Area from 1967 to 1969, the same period that the Zodiac's confirmed killings occurred in California, that Kaczynski once signed a high school yearbook with a symbol similar to the Zodiac's. The Zodiac also told one victim he resided in Montana near Lincoln, the town Kaczynski lived when he was arrested last month. This is obviously, you know, a right, right, right on the heels of that. Uh, also similar to the evident is was the evident pleasure that both the Unabomber and Zodiac took in bragging in letters to newspapers, both wrote to the Chronicle and in ridiculing investigators. Still skeptical at best, San Francisco detectives have asked the FBI for copies of Kaczynski's fingerprints to see if they match a bloody print from one of Zodiac's slaying scenes, and yesterday pulled three boxes of files from storage to sift for new clues. Some of it is pretty far-fetched, but there are enough similarities for us to at least look at it, said Vince uh, Repito, a San Francisco it's, homicide inspector. It seems inspector. like a lot of fucking sheer coincidence is being equated to evidence. I mean, there's a good chance that Kaczynski was inspired by the Zodiac, which is why he was so letter writing and antagonistic yeah, that, and seemed to revel in that. Maybe obviously, he, the prints did not match. Yeah. If they did, we'd have we'd know about it by now. Ted Kaczynski is the fucking uh, Zodiac killer. Yeah, he, uh, he's the Unabomber, but not the Zodiac. He had... Uh, there, there was a few other pieces of evidence that aren't really mentioned here, like Kaczynski actually drove a, a similar car to one that the uh, the Zodiac was described uh, as having by by witnesses uh, to uh, one of his crimes. Um, he's around the ballpark of the height and, you know, all that stuff. Doesn't really look at all like the fucking sketch. Doesn't match the prints. Probably not the fucking Zodiac. Hmm. Um, but they both had, uh, a, obviously, a math and science knowledge, though, too. Um, the Zodiac's is a little bit more... And also, the Zodiac was constantly threatening to bomb shit, too. He just never seemed to manage it. to do it. Uh, so it does seem like maybe there are th- there probably were enough similarities to at least take a look at it, but it didn't lead anywhere. So t- t- you know there have been other suspects in the case. There was um, there was a, a watch company that had a symbol that was pretty much the same as the zodiac symbol. Um, lots of fucking suspects. None of them ever panned out. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of theories to this day. There's, you know, there's, I mean, various people have been accused of being the Zodiac. There's been movies. Movies about it. All kinds of pop culture stuff. Musical references. Uh, and just like, even in movies that don't directly reference the Zodiac, like you said, anything where there's a serial killer taunting the police to catch him, pretty much inspired by uh, the Zodiac. Um, probably the biggest uh, suspect... Um, is a guy named Arthur Lee Allen. Yeah. But all of the evidence against him was circumstantial. Yeah, no, there was nothing was ever, was ever really definitively proven or actually linked to him. He was interviewed by the police in the uh, early days of the Zodiac investigations. He was subject of several search warrants over a 20-year period. So they really liked... The police really liked this guy for the Zodiac. Um on October 6, 1969, Allen was interviewed by Detective John Lynch of the Vallejo Police Department. Allen had been reported in the vicinity of the Lake uh, Berryessa attack against Hartnell and Shepard on September 27, 1969. He described himself scuba diving at Salt Point on the day of the attacks. Allen again came to police attention in 1971 when his friend Donald Cheney reported to police in Manhattan Beach, California, that Allen had spoken of his desire to, u- to, to kill people use the name Zodiac and secure a flashlight uh, to uh, to a firearm for visibility at night. Yeah, but I mean, that's so easy. He, he yeah, I mean, be- anybody who was just like, I hate this fuck, and he was a suspect, so I'm just going to go to police and say that. Um, Jack Mullinax of the uh, Vallejo Police Department subsequently uh, wrote Allen had received uh, an other than honorable discharge from the U.S. Navy in 1958, Fired from his job as an elementary school teacher in March of 1968 after allegations of sexual misconduct with students. Uh, Generally well regarded by those who knew him, 
but he was described as fixated on young children and angry at women. He apparently never had a girlfriend or wife. In September 1972, San Francisco police obtained a search warrant for his residence. Um, he was later arrested in 1974 for committing lewd uh, sex acts on a 12-year-old boy. He pleaded guilty, served two years. Vallejo police uh, served another warrant at Allen's residence on February of 1991. Two days after Allen's death in 1992, Vallejo police served another warrant and seized property from his residence. Uh, other evidence exists against Allen. A letter sent to the Riverside uh, Police Department from Bates's killer was typed with a royal typewriter with an elite type, the same brand found during the 1991 search of Allen's residence. He owned and wore a Zodiac brand wristwatch, which had that symbol I mentioned earlier. I mean, mm-hmm. it's probably more likely he was... Yeah, I mean, he had a criminal background, but was probably more just obsessed with the Zodiac killer. He lived in Vallejo and worked uh, minutes away from where the first victim, Farron, lived and where the killings took place. But that, that can always be a coincidence. I mean, yeah, like I said, it's a completely circumstantial case and not even a super strong one. Uh, just a few red flags, but once again, never able. I mean, like through repeated searches of his house, never able to find anything incriminating on him. Um, got off pretty easy on fucking raping a 12-year-old, though. Yeah, two years. Well, it's the 70s, you know. Uh, DNA, since neither test indicated a match, Allen and Cheney were excluded as contributors to the DNA. They did some DNA test on some uh, saliva from the Zodiac's uh, envelopes, and that pretty much ruled him out as a fucking suspect. That was in 2002. Uh, so probably not him, but he was their best suspect. The That's as close as they ever got was some creepy pedo in a fucking trailer somewhere that had a watch yeah. that, you know, he I had mean, a Zodiac watch. I think, I think and he was creepy and had yeah, a typewriter too. I think it, it's almost like this guy, they wanted this guy to be a person like this, as opposed to this actually being the Zodiac. I mean, they really have no idea of the Zodiac. He could have been a respected businessman. He could have been a fucking vagabond. We don't know. Right. Uh, there's been tons of other people. Actually, there's been more than one person who claimed their father was the Zodiac. Oh, this course. other dude claimed his stepdad was the Zodiac. Are they Zodiac. all selling books, too? Yep. He also has a book. Um, yeah, fuck him. I mean, I, I don't know. You can't just dismiss it because there's a book. But uh, Well... I mean, it's start, I'm starting to see a pattern here, though. Because yeah, the sure. Zodiac has been eight dudes, and there's <laughs> been a book about each one of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, I know who the not, Zodiac is. I'm not doing it solely on that basis, but if there's a profit motive... I mean, if there's really a genuine desire to solve the case, that'd be one thing. And say, here's all the evidence, and I'm also writing a book. Yeah, definitely. But it's, but it's guess what? Find out by reading my book. You yeah. know, the, the guy who said his stepdad was the Zodiac actually found a uh, uh, the costume, the a, a costume similar to the Zodiac costume. So he says in his father's belongings, they did a DNA test on it. The results were inconclusive. They weren't able to get enough viable DNA off of the outfit to say one way or the other. Um, but he did turn evidence over to the police, but nothing was conclusive about it. So basically, um, much like Jack the Ripper, we didn't really get into how many people, like, I think there's been over a hundred people claimed to have been Jack the Ripper by these people called Ripperologists who studied Jack the Ripper. Well, we promised people if they, if they gave us enough th- uh, thumbs up, which we did get a, uh, a pretty high number. I think it was like 2,200 last time I checked, so there probably will be a part two. But uh, this, the Zodiac, uh, not quite as many people uh, claimed, but quite a few. He had copycats, too. That's another thing. He had a, a copycat in New York and one in Japan. Yeah, uh, I'm, pr- I'm, pretty, I'm actually kind of familiar with the, uh, the New York Zodiac. There was a guy in New York that uh, claimed to be the Zodiac. He's like, he was, his MO was totally different. He was actually killing people based on astrological signs, or at least they thought. Yeah. It turned out it was just a coincidence. But he wasn't but, that caught. Yeah, uh, he was just some teenage kid or, you know, like guy in his 20s. And well, he, he, he was actually like, got caught because he shot his sister in yep. the ass. It was a bizarre story. He, he, he fucking threatened to shot his sister. And then, but what, what he was doing was shooting people like on street corners and shit. He would just yeah, pop. He actually built a, his own gun. He built a zip gun that he used yep. to shoot people with. Uh, he was caught because he ended up shooting his sister in the ass <laughs> when, her, when she wouldn't, like, kick her boyfriend out. And uh, when they arrested him for that, eventually they kind of put some shit together and realize he's this this Zodiac copy. Yeah, this guy they've been fucking searching for for years. And he was also writing letters to the police, you know, saying, you know, that, um, you know, like, um, I'm not a Zodiac copycat. I am the real Zodiac and all this stuff. And they're like, no, you're not. Yeah, nice try, dude. 
you're not the Zodiac. Your MO is different. Your handwriting is different. Your your whole well, fucking... Well, that's one thing they did. They did a handwriting comparison between the two and found there's... Yeah, they're like, no. Nah, almost certainly not the Zodiac. This is not the same person. Uh, for a while, people were freaked out. Like, did the Zodiac move to the East Coast? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I didn't hear about the... You said there was a Zodiac copycat in Japan as well? Yeah, there was one in Japan. Um, only killed uh, two boys, though. Oh. So but was still it, was using what? What did he use? The symbols and stuff. I didn't really get, get too much into it because I, I was. I just saw that that was also just well, well, another dude. It, yeah, but the one in New York, I saw a lot more about the the uh, the one in Japan was just. Well, the one of, in New York killed like eight or nine people or yeah. something. He was actually a pretty prolific serial killer, um, and he was total total dumbass too. Uh, not the the fiendish. Uh, the clever fiend that the the real Zodiac no, was. No, he was a fucking moron. But uh, still managed to evade capture for quite a while. Well, when you think about something, if you if you kill someone with no connection to you, it's really hard to solve that because, like, one, like you said, he, he built the gun himself. He was killing random people. He had no connection, didn't know them, just went and shot and, ki- and killed them or attempted to kill them because some of the victims did survive, too, in the... And uh, as was. one of the things that was freaking people out in New York was that they thought he was actually killing based on your astrological sign because... They noticed that every one of the victims had a different sign. I think it was like the first three or something all had the same sign. No, they all had different ones. Oh, different ones. And he was claiming like, "I will kill someone of every zodiac sign." But oh yeah, you're right. That's right. They later realized that it was just sheer coincidence when he st- when they actually like around like the fifth or sixth they started to actually double up a little and they're like, "What? This isn't meeting the pattern." And then they realized that there was no pattern. He was just killing. Well, that was true. That, yeah, yeah. Because initially they thought he knew that he, he had targeted them based on like all these uh, different things, like his sign and everything. It was kind of crazy. Easy. Yeah, there's actually a Forensic Files episode about the dude. Um, anyway, um, that's pretty much all we got for the Zodiac. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope uh, you learned something new. If you didn't, sorry. But um, And tomorrow night... We I will, did. Tomorrow night will be our infamous... Well, it's probably what was the most infamous. interesting thing uh, for you, Paul? Um... I, you know, I didn't know what... Like, I knew he was a media hound, but I didn't know how much he taunted the police. I liked learning... Like for me, it's always the character study. So I liked lear- seeing how he developed the character of Zodiac as his killings went on. I like where he, I don't like where his mind was, but I like thinking about where his mind was as he's like, okay, well I've got a little taste of fame, but they don't know what I look like, you know. So I want to do something where, you know, there's going to be a, a a drawing out there in the media that that is me you know what i mean i i love that process i love to think about that process of him creating the costume you know what i mean and how he came to want that it's it's interesting to someone that understands the power of mythology because he, he knew at some point the facts will be lost and the mythology is what will remain right and i i kind of agree with you that's kind of always the fascinating thing it was the same thing with jack the ripper that's fascinated people is when you have serial killers, you kind of have these human villains. Instead of, but we have to kind of acknowledge all the kind of the flaws in humanity. It's they're almost intrinsic in us. This, you know, darker desire for violence and to kind of do what you want and have this attention. It's like, uh, and it's really just he t- he typifies that. He really wants attention, and he knows that some probably the way for him to get it is by committing these heinous acts. Well, uh, I was. Uh I've always uh, been intrigued by the Zodiac. I think it's kind of hard not to be intrigued by someone who committed such brazen crimes and managed not to get caught. He was a troll. Yeah. I think that's what intrigues me about him. He was a troll. You know what I mean? He enjoyed telling people he was going to do things that he didn't have a plan to do. Telling people there was a bomb and then they figure out his weird little mathematical joke and it ends up just pointing to two murders they already knew about. You know what I mean? Ha ha, gotcha. You know, I like that trollish nature of him because say what you want i don't you know he killed people that's a heinous thing but anybody that fucks with the news media you know or the general populace i mean that scores a couple points in my book come on he had a sense of humor that's for sure all right so thank you guys for watching um we will be returning to you tomorrow with the prohibition episode gonna be drinking moonshine talking about prohibition and uh, we hope you guys enjoy that. It's a little treat for you patrons to thank you for uh, our success. And uh, if you enjoy this episode, give it a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to leave a comment uh, down below. Let us know what you thought. And uh, we'll see you next time. Pretty much it. Yeah. Bye. Good- well, here we are. End of the episode. Are you are you patrons yet? You know, I, I show up here. I don't know. What do you want? You want, want to see a little dance? 
You want to see the patron dance? Well, too bad. You can't see it unless you become a patron. That's right. Me doing the stupid dance is behind the Patreon paywall. Bitch. I'm going to do a dance for real, too. Look at this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to upload it just for you, for you new people. You know what I mean?